for part two of our week one lab, what we will do now is create a new script and import data. Um, don't mind this little note, that's a note to myself to create a screencast video, which I'm currently doing. Um, so what we're going to do is create a new script. So if we go to our studio here, there are a couple different ways to create a new script. Remember, that's something that's gonna show up in this top left panel here. Um, there are a couple different ways to do this. I usually just go file to new file our script. It'll open up this new file for you here. And we immediately want to save that. So go file to save as. And what we want to do is call this script file week one lab. So it didn't go. Anyways, we want to call it week one lab. Remember, we want to keep it exactly what the instructions say, um, capitalization and whatnot. And we want to make sure we save that file in that new working directory we created previously for this lab. Um, I'm not going to save this because I already have, but you would click save. And then once you do that, what will happen is now in the bottom right hand panel, you will see a new file pop up there, a week one underscore lab R script. So this is my empty script. What I usually like to do when I create a new script, even though it says in the heading, I like to just put as a comment, a description of that R script. Anything that is written after this, um, hashtag, if you want to call it, um, indicates that this is a comment. So our studio knows that this isn't code that it should be executing. It's a comment. So it, it'll pass over that and not try to execute that code. So we have our new R script file created now. We've saved it. So now we can move on to the next part of the instructions. So what we want to do now is import data into our studio. This is an important skill for you to have because every week we will essentially be working with a new example data set. So you need to be able to import that into our studio. I will always provide that data file for you. So the file for this first lab is on the lab one resources page on Canvas. So we want to go to Canvas, click on that file and download it don't open it. It's a CSV file. Um, don't worry about it. You don't need to view it on your computer. So just download it. You don't need to do anything else. You don't need to open it. And then you need to put that file in your working directory, that new folder we created for Bio178 Lab. And when I say put that file in your directory, I mean either copy and paste that file or you can drag it into that file. Um, but once you've downloaded the file, make sure it's located within that directory. And to double check you've done that correctly, once you're in our studio in this bottom right files panel, if we are in that folder, that directory we just created, we should now see that data file. So this week we're working with a heat stress by farm.csv file. This is a data set from uh, my own research lab looking at different growth rate responses by juvenile abalone from two different farms. MAC is Monterey Abalone Company and CAF is Cultured Abalone Farm. Um, so these are, this data is growth rates for juvenile abalone after they were exposed to heat stress or high temperatures. But the important thing you want to check right now is that within that working directory, you see that data file there. And before we do anything else, again, double check that your working directory is set to what we want it to be. Um, we are already there. If we haven't touched anything since we've created that new project, we should be good to go. So now we are ready to load the data. So what you want to do is run this command, type that into your week one lab R script. So you can either type it, you can even literally just copy and paste that into your R script. 
So what this script is doing, so read.csv is a function that tells our studio you want to take that data file you have on your computer and put it into our studio so our studio then has access to it to manipulate it for um, statistics or making graphs and whatnot. So this is the name of the file. Again, this has to match exactly. So that's why I recommend copying and pasting. Another fun trick is that if you start typing it and then press your tab key, it'll auto complete it for you if it's the only file in that directory that starts with that name. So that's another nice trick to prevent typing errors is once you type a few of the letters, just hit tab and it'll auto complete it for you. Um, Make sure when you're using this read.csv command, the name of your file needs to be in quotation marks and parentheses. So, um, and you can see that if you, and I'll explain what this abalone part is in a second, but once you type read.csv, um, again, you can hit tab and it'll automatically add those parentheses for you. And then you can just add in whatever the name of that file is. So the other part of this code is the beginning part, it says abalone. So what we're doing here is essentially telling our studio to import this data file and to call that file abalone. So anytime you're importing a data file, you want to give it a name so it's easier now instead of every time you're working with that data file, instead of having to type out this whole .csv name, once we execute this command and add that import that CSV file and tell our studio that we're calling it abalone, anytime in the rest of the session we refer to abalone, our studio is going to know that's what we're talking about, this particular data set. So this is the command we want to run. So this is all in our, our script file. So if we want to run this command in the console, so we can't run anything from the script, we need to run it all on the console. There are a couple ways to do that. We can either click our cursor here on the line of code we want to run and just click run. Or on a Mac, you can hit command enter. And what it will do is then run that command in the console. And when we did that, you may have noticed that this new thing popped up here. This is telling us now that we have this new abalone object in our studio that is associated with that data we asked it to import. So you may notice though, if we go back to these instructions here, it doesn't give us any output here in the console because all we've done is tell our studio to import the data file and call it by this name abalone. If we wanna actually see what the data looks like, we need to then type the name that we just called it. We need to type abalone. So again, we want to go back to a new line on in our R script. If we type abalone and execute that, so we, again, we can also click run. What it will do now in the console is show you all the data contained within that file. So we have 19 different data points. We have two different columns. The first column is the name of the farm. So it tells us for each of these 19 different juvenile abalone, which California abalone farm they came from, MACRCAF. And then in the right hand column, it gives us the daily growth rate. So during the experiment, how much did each of these juvenile abalone grow during the experiment? So for us, a data set of 19 individuals is pretty manageable. Sometimes you'll have really, really big data sets and you won't want to visually see the whole thing. Um, you always want to check somehow, at least I always check to make sure that I imported the data correctly. So um, I want to make sure there's actually data there. But if you didn't want to see all of it, if it had hundreds and hundreds of rows, what you could type in your R script is the command head and then the name of your what you're calling your data. If you execute that, it'll just give you the first six lines of that data set. So this is a nice quick way to check and make sure that everything was loaded correctly. And, oh, just a tip here on using the course code handout. So here in this new 
week one lab script we've created. And again, remember to save that as you're working through it. I've provided this code handout just as backup in case you're having trouble. So again, everything after these pound signs or hashtags are comments and it gives you comments. So if you wanna import CSV data file, for instance, if you have this code handout open, you don't even need to type any of the code. You can just put your cursor on the line of code you wanna execute, um, press run, and that'll run down here in your console. So this is a backup resource for you if you're having trouble getting the code to run. And again, you could even copy and paste this code from the code handout into your script file, um, and you could do it that way too. Okay, so that brings us to part three, which I will then cover in the next tutorial video.